good evening dear brother and uh, sisters so today what we are going to look at is we will be looking at uh, the reason for the sacrifice of jesus christ why should he come down to this earth and what was the sole reason and purpose for him to sacrifice himself or to be crucified well we all say and it is definitely said that he died for our sins which is absolutely true but in what sense did he die for our sins well if he has already died for my sins then uh, does it mean that i can continue to sin no does it mean that all my sins that are i am going to do tomorrow is already forgiven no then what what and how do we understand the the, the death of christ now to understand this uh, apostle paul who was one of the greatest uh, leaders i would i would i would tell him uh, for the gentiles now the gentiles are us the the gentiles are are you and me because we do not or we did not belong to the generation of abraham abraham was the first person uh, with whom god called out and he said that he made a covenant with abraham and then he said that i'm going to bless your uh, seed as the sands of the sea and as the stars of the sky but uh, we are not from abraham right if i trace back my father and my grandfather and his great grandfather they don't reach to abraham which means i'm not i'm not from abraham seed but still uh, how can uh, christ come for me now that's also a question right so paul paul comes here paul comes to the to the gentiles and that is us and he talks about this this sacrifice that jesus did now just before we go to paul go to understanding of, 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 of about apostle paul let's look at a certain event that happened in the old testament which actually typified when i say typified which actually shadowed when i say shadowed which gave an example of what jesus would do to this entire universe so where do we see this we see this uh, in a certain event uh, do we all know we all I, i believe that we all we all know the 10 commandments we believe we know that right now just before the 10 commandments were given through moses to the people of uh, the hebrew speaking people or they are also called as the jews before the 10 commandments were given all of them were in slavery now how did they go to slavery now while they were in slavery have you heard about the 10 plagues of egypt the right from the first plague when moses goes and then he 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 performs a great miracle and then there's a there's 10 plagues that surrounds the land of egypt we know that right now the 10th plague the 10th plague is the death of of the first born not just the first born child in a house but also the first born of the cattle the first born of the flock which means the first born sheep the first born cow calf all of that is going to be killed or died or they're going to lose their life on that 10th plague unless unless there is a sacrifice that is being made now that's what we are going to look at because this sacrifice was in direct relationship with the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and i'm not telling this apostle paul is the one who who correlates both of this so let's begin with 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 this event now what happened is that uh, during the time of joseph right now we know that joseph went into the land of egypt as a as a slave he was sold and he went into the land of egypt as a slave and then joseph becomes a great ruler uh, or uh, next to the king he be, he governs the entire entire egypt the king ordered the entire people saying that uh, no, everyone should bow down to joseph so that was the status that joseph inherited in the land of egypt now after joseph now during the time of joseph there was a great famine that came throughout the entire country at that point in time and the neighboring countries uh, is that is that clear so far if if anything is not clear please pause and uh, and 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 unmute yourself and please feel free to ask questions dear brothers and sisters so so if we we are going again once again here so what happens is that uh, uh, joseph comes to egypt and then joseph has a pile of ration he already has the barn the storehouse all of it now his brothers his brothers uh, 11 of them 
they are outside egypt and they all come to egypt in search of food and that's how they meet joseph they but they were not able to identify joseph joseph identifies them and then there's a long conversation that happens between them and finally they are reunited so that's the long story short they are finally reunited now after the reunion after they have been reunited joseph sends forth joseph sends uh, all of his is is 11 brothers and then he says go ahead call all the family members and come back the king also commands them about 70 people in total about 70 people the the jews or the hebrew speaking people they have still not received the status of the jews yet they were only called as the hebrew speaking people or the the hebrews so 70 people in total they all come into the land of egypt and then they stay in egypt they multiply in egypt and after that joseph dies jacob dies all of his brother dies and generation after generation they are in egypt then there was a, there was another pharaoh there was another king the title of that king is called pharaoh pharaoh is not a name pharaoh is just a title given to the kings so another pharaoh comes into egypt and then he looks he looks around and then he sees the hebrew speaking people have greatly multiplied in the land of egypt so he says that i cannot allow this because if i allow this tomorrow the hebrew speaking people will come to me and then they're going to ask me saying that i we need a king from the hebrews so i cannot allow this so what he makes them instead is he makes them slaves he makes them to build the greatest cities like ramesses and then another city called pictom so he makes them build big cities he makes them Uh, make the straw the clay bricks and also uh, and also build cities so this is when this is when god uh, uh, remembers the covenant that he made with abraham you remember the covenant he made with abraham that's where he starts off right god said to abraham i will multiply your seed and in your seed the entire earth will be blessed so then god uh, when it says god remembers it doesn't mean that god forgot about the promise but simply means only then it was time for god to act upon so what what god does god then calls upon moses right he calls upon moses and he sends moses and aaron and moses and aaron both of them go into the land of egypt they meet the king moses uh, does a miracle but they don't want to accept it then uh, moses says that there's going to be curses so he starts off with the curse the water is turning into blood then frogs are filling the land of egypt then uh, there's a lot of uh, gnats or lice that comes throughout the land of egypt and then it's it's filled with flies all the livestock have been killed which means the cattle cattle herd the the flocks uh, camels and goats and sheep and donkeys everything most of them are are having a disease and they die and then the human beings in in egypt they get they get uh, large boils on their skins like like how we have the monkey virus today monkey virus is something that puts boils right i'm not saying that they got monkey virus but something of that nature so they all got boils on their uh, their their flesh and then uh, uh, there were hail stones that came from above locust came throughout the land of egypt there were darkness and then the final curse or the final plague which is called the death of the first born now that's what exactly what we are going to look into today so the death of the first born the nine plagues is something very different we will not touch base upon that but all the nine plagues that happened in egypt they were typifying something else they had a they had a greater meaning to it all the nine plagues now the 10th plague is the most important plague that we are going to look at because the 10th plague was the one that changed the entire event the entire course of event so god calls moses and god says hey moses look at this uh, the king pharaoh every every time there is a plague that is being sent the heart of the king pharaoh is, is hardened even further so at the 10th plague he is going to let you all free he is going to let everyone go out of this land in fact the king will drive you out of this land which means he does not want you to stay here anymore so he is going to drive you out and be ready uh, dear brothers and sisters if you have a pen and a paper handy with you please make a note of these chapters and the verses that i am going to uh, 
uh, talk upon precedingly because it's very, very important. So here in Exodus, the book of Exodus, that's the second book in the Old Testament from the beginning. So the book of Exodus chapter 12, verses 31 to 33. When we look at uh, the book of Exodus chapter 12, verses 31 to 33, all of these events are is, 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 added, is, is added there, is, is mentioned there. So what happens? Uh, uh, there is a call in the night. So God says that, hey, look, he's going to call you in the night. You'll have to leave at once. And when you are going to leave, make sure that you are already ready and prepared because the king is going to drive you out so that he never sees you. And then he says that this is the first month for you. That's when the calendar month also begins for the Hebrews. That's given in Exodus chapter 12 verses 2. He talks about the first month. He says in Exodus chapter 12 verses 2, this month is to be for you the first month and the first month of your year. And what month is the first month? It's called April. For us, it, for us, it is Jan, Jan, right? January is the first month of the year. But for the Hebrews, that's for the Jews, for the Israelites, the first month is the month of April. And this is also mentioned in the book of Esther. But we're not going to go into that details. But we straight away go into the 10th plague. Now, the 10th plague, the death of the firstborn. That's the most important thing that we will have to look at is because Jesus Christ is typified in this 10th plague. How? Exodus chapter 12 narrates this entire thing. So he starts off by giving an instruction. In Exodus chapter 12, verses 3 to 13, he gives this instruction. He says uh, to, to Moses, he says, Moses, Moses, I am going to send a 10, I'm going to send the final last plague. It's going to be a death blow. It's going to be a death blow. And if anyone who does not obey this commandment, they are going to die. And then he makes a provision for Moses and all the Hebrew speaking people to escape from this 10th plague, the death blow, the plague of the death angel. So he says, he gives instruction to Moses and he says, this is what you are supposed to instruct all the other people, all the Hebrew people. What they will have to do is they will have to select uh, uh, their brother and sister. Please make note of these instructions because, like I said, it is directly in correlation with Jesus Christ. And it's very important for us to know if we want to understand why Jesus gave himself as a, as a sacrifice. Why should he die? This is the very foundation for us. We should definitely know this. So here is what he starts off. He says, on the 10th day of the first month. So he, he, he gives something. He says, on the 10th day of the first month. Now, the first month is April for them. So he says, on the 10th day of the first month, make sure that you, you select a lamb. Make sure you select a lamb. The lamb must be a male lamb, not a female, but a male lamb. The lamb should be white. It should not have any blemish. It should not have any spots on it. The lamb cannot be wounded. The lamb cannot be handicapped, which means the lamb cannot have a squint eye, a hopping leg. Uh, the, it's, it's nothing. It should be a perfect lamb. Make sure you select a perfect lamb and you, and you, and, and you bring that lamb into your house on the 10th day of the first month. Okay, so far is clear, right? So far is clear, right, dear brother and sister? If not, please unmute and let me know. I'm just going to pause here for like five seconds. And if you have any questions, please feel free. <clears throat> okay, so I guess there are no questions and it's clear. So here's what the instruction. So, you, so what the people did is they all selected the lamb on the 10th day of the first month and they got the lamb into their house and they had to take very good care of the lamb. Now, uh, this is how the lamb probably was. Uh, so what they will do is now they will take the lamb and they will tend the lamb. They will uh, take care of the lamb for about four days. Let's please make note of all of these days and instruction. The first thing is select the lamb on the 10th day of the first month. Keep the lamb in your house for four days, which means until 14. Keep the lamb for four days. And after the fourth day, what you are supposed to do is you will have to cut the lamb. You will have to kill the lamb. But the most important thing is 
when you kill the lamb make sure the lamb is not cut into pieces you cannot cut the lamb into pieces which means the lamb's bones cannot be broken it should be a whole it should be a fully roasted lamb all right and then god gives an instruction on how you need to eat this lamb this this is the one that he calls as the passover lamb because the death is being passed over from one house to another house so he says this is the passover lamb and this is how you will need to eat the lamb this is mentioned in exodus chapter 12 verses 11 so he says that you will have to be fully dressed make sure that you are fully dressed wear your sandals wear your sandals and have a walking stick in your hand uh tie a tie a belt belt across your waist tie a belt across your across your waist and then you will have to eat it fast and when you are eating it you will have to uh, he also gives certain instructions when you are eating this they cannot just eat the lamb just like that they will need to have something with them they need to have what is called as bitter herbs bitter herbs Bit, so you will have to consume bitter herbs and then you will have to eat this lamb but also make sure the blood of this lamb is on the door post of your house smear smear the door post with the blood of this lamb that's very important because the next thing what is going to happen is that the death angel the angel of the death is going to come to your house and the minute the angel of the death sees the blood in on your door post and that you have consumed the uh, passover lamb the death will be passed over from one house to another house and then god says this is going to be an eternal commandment which means you will have to do this every year after year so that you don't forget the mighty work that i've done for you and your children's will always remember me so what the people of israel then did is they start to eat it, they start to do it year after year now now we are going to go into few more details of this instruction this is the method on how they will have to eat dear brothers and sisters please make note of this very very important this is the method on how they will have to consume the passover lamb when they are consuming the passover lamb they will need to have bread with them bread bread but that bread has to be an unleavened bread not a leavened one what is the difference a leavened bread will contain yeast in it you know yeast right yeast is used to ferment a flour that's what is being used today when we buy bread from all bakeries you cannot keep them for long because and and, and then uh, uh, it's it's already fermented fermented using yeast god says you cannot use that yeast and then that's why he says you have to use unleavened bread and then you cannot have anything else just unleavened bread and you will also need to have what bitter herbs you need to have bitter herbs so unleavened bread bitter herbs and then the lamb that you killed that cannot be chopped into pieces it has to be roasted as a whole so no bones will have to be broken so you you eat it you you roast the lamb as a whole and then you will have to consume the lamb roasted lamb along with unleavened bread along with bitter herbs along with bitter herbs and when you are consuming the passover meal you will have to be fully ready you know which means you'll have to wear your tunics your cloaks you'll have to wear a belt you'll have to wear slippers and then you will have to have a walking stick in your hand make sure you hold this because if you make any mistakes in this if you make any mistakes in this you are sure to die he says okay so this is what happened in the 10th plague and that's how the people of israel were saved and then they moved out they were they, they came out and then they were they became a land they became a nation now let's go to the words of apostle paul that's it about the 10th plague now we are going to straight away jump into jesus christ very important dear brothers and sisters uh, how jesus christ is related into this now in the book of first corinthians or the letter to the corinthians apostle paul writes this first corinthians chapter 5 verses 7 he says jesus christ is our passover lamb and then this lamb has been sacrificed so he is giving a very important statement over here he is saying that jesus christ is the passover lamb and then he says that lamb has been sacrificed how can jesus christ be the lamb because we saw the same lamb that was sacrificed in egypt right 
he is saying that that lamb is jesus christ now let's let's go put back everything into place let's go put back everything in in order a, a piece by piece now let's let's look at the first one uh in 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 egypt during the 10th plague during the 10th plague a lamb was selected right when was the lamb selected the lamb was selected on the on the 10th day of the first month that's clear right the lamb was selected or the lamb came into the house on the 10th day of the first month the lamb came into the house on the 10th day of the first month now jesus is jesus the lamb yes jesus is a lamb that's why john the baptist said right behold the lamb of god so jesus also is compared to a lamb and then jesus is coming here to take away the sins how is he taking away the sins of this world that's what we are more interested in knowing now when when jesus when he made his journey uh he made his journey throughout israel israel was was split into the 12 tribes uh, we will look and look into it uh, in detail in the coming weeks but then for our understanding the uh, israel was was filled with the 12 tribes of israel right uh, the two tribes called as the tribe of juda and the tribe of benjamin they were in down south when i said down south they were towards the south of uh, of of israel let's imagine the map of india if you look at the map of india or i'm sorry if you if you look at the map of the world of the entire world the south the south of the world you see uh, arctic antarctica you see that side right that's how israel was uh, the, the 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 map of israel towards the south the south you had two tribes which was benjamin and the tribe of juda and then the other tribes were on uh, towards the north side uh, where jesus did much of his ministry as well like the sea of galilee where he walked on the water where he caught simon where he also had simon his brother andrew james and and his and his and his brothers all of them right most of them were, were uh, from that sea of galilee because they were fishermen so jesus's ministry was going to the 10 tribes and was he was also coming to the two tribes now the the, the jerusalem jerusalem and the temple of solomon was towards the towards the south it was at the bottom at, at the very bottom so jesus whenever he wants to come to jerusalem whenever he wanted to come to jerusalem he used to go to his friend's house his friend was lazarus the one who jesus raised back from the dead that's the guy lazarus so he used to go to lazarus's house he stays in lazarus's house every night uh, whenever he wants to come to jerusalem he'll have a supper with him and then the next day jesus used usually used to make his travel into jerusalem now that's what he's doing even in his last uh, last year of his life after this jesus is going to uh, going to be killed or he's going to offer himself as a sacrifice so the last journey of jesus christ now this is what happens in the last journey of jesus christ i'm going to narrate it step by step let's make a little bit of uh, uh, notes on this so here jesus comes to the house of lazarus he stays in the house of lazarus uh, and then uh, uh, straight away he goes into jerusalem he looks into the temple and in the temple there were money changers he looks at them and he comes back he comes back he comes back to lazarus's house and that's where uh, he gets anointed with uh, the fragrant oil we know that right anointing of oil that's where he gets anointed and that's when he gets anointed after the anointing jesus sleeps or rests in lazarus house the next day morning he gets up he was very hungry he walks to a fig tree he looks at a fig tree he sees the fig tree has not produced any figs he curses the fig tree and then he goes into jerusalem look at this dear brothers and sisters he goes into jerusalem he turns over all the money changers and then he sits on a donkey and then he starts to ride towards jerusalem that's the most important thing that we're looking at he starts to ride towards jerusalem now when he's riding towards jerusalem dear brothers and sisters i hope so far you're not confused if you are confused please stop me and and ask me questions because i don't want to carry on with the confusion because if you're confused we'll not be able to conclude so i'm going to give another 5 seconds pause just if you have any questions okay so i hope there are no other questions all right 
uh, straight away we can move forward. So here's what happens. All right. Jesus goes into Jerusalem uh, driving on a donkey. We know that. We sing Hosanna, right? And that is when Jesus entered Jerusalem. And you know on which day that Jesus entered Jerusalem? It was on the 10th day of the first month. There are a lot of biblical verses and proofs. You can make a note of it. John chapter 12 verses 1 verses 2 and verses 12. If you calculate, it will, it will exactly show you that Jesus entered Jerusalem on the 10th day of the first month, the month of April. And, the, and if you look at the Old Testament, the lamb was supposed to be brought into the house on the 10th day of the first month. Jesus is the lamb in the New Testament and he enters Jerusalem on the 10th day of the first month. It was very, very astonishing on how the plan of God comes perfectly uh, in accordance with each other. Now, if you look at the other, other place, Isaiah chapter 53 verses 7 says that Jesus was led as a lamb to be slaughtered. Have you read about that? Isaiah chapter 53 verses 7, which means Isaiah also compares Jesus to a lamb to be slaughtered. Now in the 10th plague, there was the lamb that was selected. The lamb that was selected was without blemish and was without any spot. Jesus Christ was also a lamb. He had no defects, which means he too had, he was without blemish and he was without a spot, Jesus. What does this mean? Jesus did not have the blemish of a sin. Jesus did not have any spot of a sin. He was also a sinless, spotless, uh, uh, without any blemish. He too was a lamb. Where do we find this? We find this in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 12, which means Jesus also was a lamb without any blemish and without any spot. Now, the most important thing. If we go back again to the Old Testament, the lamb that was being selected was kept in the house for four days. And on the fourth days when the lamb had to be killed, Jesus also stayed inside Jerusalem for four days. And exactly on the fourth days when Jesus was also killed on the cross. It was a perfect match between the Old Testament and the New Testament. In fact, dear brothers and sisters, you will be even more shocked that to, to know that Jesus was killed at the exact time, at the exact time when the Passover lamb was also being sacrificed. There, was, there were two sacrifices that was offered in, in tabernacle. We will look at it at a, at a different time. <clears throat> at 9 in the morning, 9 a.m. in the morning and at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Jesus also was crucified at 9 a.m. in the morning and he let his life at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. It was not even closely matched. It was a perfect match. Okay. And if you look at, if you look at the 10th plague, in that 10th plague, the lamb must not be cut into pieces, which means the bones of the lamb cannot be broken. And this is what happened to Jesus also, right? His, his bone was neither broken. He was killed, but his, 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 his bones were not broken at all. We see this in Psalms chapter 34, verses 20, and John chapter 19, verses 36. So his, his bones were just like that. And why did this all this happen? Is because in the Old Testament, it was already typified that that lamb will be Jesus. Now, the lamb in the Old Testament, who did the lamb save from the death? There was a death curse, right? Who, by sacrificing the lamb and by applying the, the blood on the doorpost, who are the ones that are going to be saved? Is it the father? No. Is it the mother? No. Will it be a brother or sister? No. It will be the firstborn. If, if, if the sacrifice was not made, then the firstborn in that house will die. So the sacrifice was made to save the firstborn. Today, dear brothers and sisters, who are these firstborns? The firstborn is you and me. The Christians are the firstborn. How do we know this? We know this for sure is book of, because in the book of James, chapter 1, 
verses 18, it says that we have been born again by his word and we are the firstborn. So whoever today is being born again by the word of God is the firstborn of God. And Jesus' sacrifice is firstly applicable to them. It is going to save them only. How? When Jesus died, who did Jesus die for? Did Jesus die for the entire world? Yes. But before the entire world, Jesus first died for his church. Where is it written? It is written in the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 25, which means Jesus first died for the church, for the church. And who is the church? We are the church. Now, the blood in the Old Testament, if you look at it, the, the blood of the lamb, had to be smeared, had to be applied, had to be smeared on the doorpost to be saved. Today, the blood of Christ also had to be applied on the doorpost. And that doorpost, dear brothers and sisters, is our hearts. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verses 7, the letter to the Romans chapter 5 verses 9, and the letter to the Hebrews chapter 9 verses 14, all says the same thing. The door is our heart. And on our heart, we will have to smear the blood of Christ, the blood of the Lamb. Only when we do this, only when we do this, the death that is upon this entire world and also upon us will be passed away. How? How? The Passover Lamb has to be sacrificed. Now, if the Passover Lamb is not, is not eaten, is not sacrificed and it is not eaten, then they will not be saved. Jesus is already sacrificed. Now the question is, are we eating Jesus Christ? Are we consuming Jesus Christ? If yes, then there is a method on how we need to consume the Jesus Christ. How? If you go back to the, again, to the Passover, uh, when they had to eat the lamb, they had to keep unleavened bread. They will have to keep bitter herbs and be fully dressed and, and only then eat the meat. The same thing applies now. Now, Jesus is the bread from heaven. He is the Passover lamb and we are supposed to consume him, right? And if you're consuming him, firstly, we'll need to have an unleavened bread. What is unleavened? What is leaven? Firstly, let's understand what is leaven. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 to 8, Apostle Paul says that leaven means wickedness and evil. Sin is equals to leaven. Leaven means sin. And today, if, 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 if I consume, in, consume Jesus Christ with leaven in me, which, which means if I consume Jesus Christ with, with sin in me, then I will not be able to survive. The death will definitely come to me. is because I am, not, I am not eating according to the instructions. The instruction is very clear. Unleavened bread, which means today we should, we should not have the leaven of sin with us. And then he says, you'll have to keep the bitter herbs. Now, what is bitter herbs? Bitter herbs are bitter experiences. Jesus says, right, if you want to follow me, pick up your cross every day and follow me till your death. And he also says, in those days, whoever wants to follow me will be persecuted. And following Jesus is not easy because it's, it's, it's walking in the narrow way. Not in the broad way, but in the narrow way, which means the bitter herbs are the bitter trials, the bitter experiences that we get while we are followers of Jesus Christ. How can we understand even further? Now, during the time of Jesus, there were a lot of people trying to follow him. There were people who followed Jesus only because they wanted to be healed, only people who wanted to have their sickness uh, be healed, demons casted away. Uh, and then to be fed because every time they go meet Jesus, they get stomach full of food. They were, th th that was the majority of the people. The, the, the very little people like the apostles, excluding uh, Judas, they followed Jesus because Jesus had life-giving words. At one point in time, uh, Jesus uh, talks about his doctrine. He, he gives a teaching and then many people come to Jesus and they tell him, oh, your teachings are very hard. It's very hard to follow. And they all abandon Jesus and they go away. Then now Jesus looks at his disciples and he says, do you also want to go? If you want to go, just go away. 
But then Peter makes a bold statement. He says that, oh Lord, where can I go when all the life-giving words are with you? Which means apostles followed Christ is because he had the life-giving words. Now, exactly like that, in, in, the, in, 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 in Christianity, the majority of the people today follow Jesus Christ is only for, only for the worldly uh, uh, releases. Like they don't have a job, they come to Christ. They don't have work, they come to Christ. They're not married, they seek Jesus Christ. They have a problem, they have a disease, they have some family issues. You know, it's, it's more of worldly relief. Now, Jesus uh, didn't deny help to them. He said, take it and go away. But you cannot be my disciple. You cannot be my follower. Because if you are my follower, you will carry all of this without making any petitions to it and still follow me. That's the cross. And that is the bitter herbs that we are supposed to eat. Only if we eat the bitter herbs, dear brothers and sisters, will we be able to pass over the death which is on us. And he also says, when you are consuming this meat, you will have to wear your tunics, which means you be fully dressed, wear your cloth, right? What is the robe? What is the cloth? Uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 61 verses 10 says or calls this as the robe of righteousness. Apostle Paul in the, in, in the letter to the Romans and to the Corinthians in Romans chapter 9 verses 30 and 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 21, he says that whoever, whoever has been baptized into Christ is wearing Christ as their robes. I'm going to make this one more time. I'm going to say this again. He says that today, if any one of us have been baptized into Jesus Christ, then we are wearing our clothes. Our dress is not shirt and pant. Our dress is not suit. Our dress is Jesus Christ, it seems. And that's what happened in the Old Testament. He said that before you consume this meat, make sure you're wearing your cloth. Today, before we consume Jesus Christ, we will have to be sure that we are wearing Jesus itself uh, like our robes, like our clothes. And after that, we need to have our belt, belt around the waist. Now, what is this belt? Ephesians chapter 6 verses 14 says the belt means it's truth. Wear the belt like a truth, it says. So you'll have to wear truth as a belt. Why does it refer to belt? Because if you don't wear the belt, uh, the pants going to drop down and uh, you know it's not going to be nice, right? That's why Jesus says, when I come, make sure that I don't see you naked. He makes the statement. He, he, he tells this. And, and if we should not be found naked in front of him, then we'll have to wear the belt. And the belt is the truth, dear brothers and sisters. What are we studying here? We are studying the truth. We are wearing the belt across the waist. And then he says, you'll have to get your sandals ready. What is sandals? Ephesians chapter 6 verses 15 says, sandals means peace. Now, how peace are we? Do we have peace within ourselves? Uh, are we annoyed for small things? Do we get angry? Do we get irritated? If we do, that means we are not having the peace that Christ is expecting from us. And this peace should be like a sandals to our feet to protect us. And then he says, have the staff in your hand. What is the staff? Psalms chapter 23 says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The staff is the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter. So make sure you have the Holy Spirit like a staff with you. And only then you will be able to eat the Passover meal. Only if you eat the Passover meal, will you be able to go out of slavery, out of Egypt to the promised land. Today, we are also in slavery, slave to sin. And the ruler of Egypt was Pharaoh, was King Pharaoh then. The ruler of this world now is Satan. And if we have to go away from here, to the promised land, like Canaan, to the promised heaven, then we too should pass over all of this, which means Jesus has already been sacrificed. We will have to take his blood, apply it on our heart like a doorpost, and then we will have to be fully ready, wear Jesus itself as our, as our, as our cloth, have a belt in our waist, which is truth, Ephesians, the book of Ephesians says, says that. And then uh, like our sandals, we'll have to wear peace as our sandals. 
and have the staff which is the holy spirit in our hand and only then consume christ but when we are consuming him we'll have to make sure that we don't have any leaven which is sin and we will have to consume with bitter herbs which are bitter experiences that is the cross that he asked us to carry and only if we do this dear brothers and sisters only if we do this will we be able to go out from the land of egypt and today egypt is this entire world and the ruler of this world as it is said in first corinthians it says that the ruler of this world 2 corinthians chapter 3 3 it says that the ruler of this world is satan satan is the ruler of this world and if we want to go away from this world into the promised land that jesus has promised us which is the heaven then means we will have to also consume christ in this method now when jesus died right the, the the whole topic that we're discussing today is why did jesus die on the cross why did he give himself into death is because to save us and how he saves us is like this it is shown in the old testament but what we saw today what we just saw today is on, is only is only the first is only the first part of of the death of jesus christ as to we 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 still unlocking to see why did he die how is his death applicable to to us and the next week when we look into this it will be completely clear the complete sacrifice of jesus christ was made now for this week what we have understood is that in the old testament it was already shown that jesus will come in the new testament it was already shown that jesus will be a lamb and it was already shown that the people of israel will go out from egypt and today christians or the followers of jesus christ who are now in uh, bondage of sin will go out from this egypt which is this earth uh, with the uh, under the rulership of uh, uh, the ruler uh, satan satan is the ruler of this world under his rulership we will come out and for us to come out we will also have to follow this what the sacrifice of jesus christ we will have to apply his sacrifice into our hearts that means we will always have to remember and respect to sacrifice and consume him by wearing christ himself as our clothes which is the robe of righteousness with unleavened bread which means without sin with bitter herbs and with fully dressed by wearing truth as our belt and peace as our sandals holding the holy spirit into our hands and consume it fast so that we too will then be released and we will go into the promised land that he has kept for us which is the heavenly calling that's why apostle peter stresses a lot and he says set your minds on a, on the on the things above and not on the things below and we dear brothers and sisters we have been called for the things above and not the things of this earth so let us fix our minds and fix our heart on the things above and keep that as our focus and in the weeks to come the next week we will study in detail about the message of the cross why did jesus die on the cross what was the reason for his sacrifice and how you and i are saved today and from there on for the next one year we will be looking at a lot many things from genesis until revelation and god willing we will continue to fellowship until this life is here or within this body may god bless us all for giving us this time and also this mind to concentrate on his word and meditate upon his uh, the sacrifice of his son and may we store this in our heart without forgetting and write this into our mind so that the next week when we meet again this truth might be fresh yet in our hearts and in our minds may god bless us and let the peace of christ be in all of us amen